Okay, sorry for starting late. We had some last minute changes to do on the slide set. <laughs> Plus also have dinner very late, uh, lunch very late. So um, Fabio and I are gonna present you um, how we run your Python. Because uh, for next year we're gonna uh, have a switch in, in location again. We're gonna move away from, from Bilbao, unfortunately, uh, because it's been really great here. And of course we need my help for that. And if you're interested in helping then, maybe we have something here for you. So let's just give a short introduction about what the EPS does in this. The EPS is an organization behind EuroPython. Uh, it was founded in 2004 uh, in, in Gothenburg, in Sweden, to provide like the legal backup. Like, like the PSF, for example, we have the trademark of EuroPython. Uh, the intention is that we also provide some financial support for the, for the organizers, and we've uh, also run the selection process for the location a couple of times. And since 2014, we started actually actively working with the local teams to uh, make everything happen. And in 2015, we added uh, some extras, which I'm going to talk about in the next slide. So first, the, the first period of the EPS was basically just providing these things, like trademarks, logos, uh, selection of the, the location. And then in 2015, we decided to uh, basically re set the whole EPS and change, completely change the organizational model to a workgroup based model. And this has turned out to be really uh, working well. So we now have uh, quite a few workgroups to, to work with. Um, the main reason for doing this was to reduce the loss of institu institutional knowledge that we had each time we changed locations. So previously the onsite team did everything. And every time we change location, the new onsite team had to relearn everything and redo everything, uh, which also, for example, meant that we had uh, a new website system for each and every location. And we're moving away from that. So we have one website system that we use. Uh, we have these work groups that continue to work throughout uh, the years. Uh, all the knowledge is kept in those work groups, and uh, it's it's really yeah working out. So. This is how we're working now. <clears throat> so the EPS structure now looks like this. You have a board, uh, with, with board meaning that it's basically the most active members uh, working on the Europython organization. Then you have work groups that help with uh, all the different parts of, an organ of the organization. And then, of course, you have the EPS members. And we're going to have the General Assembly right after this uh, session where uh, we are going to report to the members what we did last year. And of course, you have the EuroPython attendees, and all the attendees are welcome to, to join the EPS because we think that you should have a say in how everything works out. So I'm going to pass over to Fabio now. So uh, just a quick timeline about this year organization, which was uh, definitely different from last year. Um, in November 2015, we launched the preview site. And January we started uh, the real active work in, in Europe, I think, your groups. Uh, we, were, we, we still work um, before, but the real work started there. Uh, in February we, we launched the, the website, all the tickets, the early words, um, the call for proposals. Um, March we had the regular ticket sales uh, and talk voting. Um, we started the financial aid uh, program in April and we also did the schedule online around that date. Uh, we actually did a new thing this year to uh, help last time proposals or proposals for hot, uh, hot topics. Uh, so in June we did a second call for paper. Um, and in July we basically switched beyond desk rates and uh, in the last minute nice thing was the conference app online. Uh, we actually had a, a big, a great feedback about the app online. Um, uh, and well, of course, we all know that July 17th, we started the conference. Uh, and today we are having a general assembly. Um, so the conference organization, really, the, the hard work take, took six months. Um, but it, honestly, it's more than that. This year, every second year is easier, um, a lot, because you already know a lot of things that it's not really 
it's it's hard to predict uh, regarding venues, regarding communications, regarding um, yeah people that can show up or not, uh, financial small things. Um, so this year we were more much more aware of the things, um, and we can and actually we made some adjustments based on last year feedback. Uh, people still complain anyway for. <laughs> For stuff uh, it, that, that that's how it is. So small like advice for volunteers or people that uh, are organizing their conferences or doing community. Uh, always take the positive part and try to improve the negative feedbacks. Like it's it's always good to have negative feedbacks, uh, but never put yourself down really because everyone in every community, if you have issues, you should and people are not good with it, you should really invite everyone to join and, and make a better community as, as they would like. So that, that's the same thing we try to do here. Um, this year we added the Telegram communication hub. That was a really good thing um, and helped a lot, both organizers and uh, the communication between uh, attendees, volunteers, and everyone. Uh, so some history and some development uh, regarding the the evolution. Um, first conference was in uh, in Belgium, uh, fairly good number to, to 240. Then we have some. I don't think we have reliable data for those years, um, but we did have um, a Neuropython um, uh, in Switzerland and Vilnius. Uh, and I forget. We had two, Birmingham. Two, two in Göteborg, we had yes, two in Birmingham, Birmingham, we had one in, at CERN and in Switzerland, we had we're two in Vilnius, yeah. uh, and we had three in Florence, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but one yes. in Berlin, and then two in Bilbao. Um, yeah, the, the evolution before was as much, um, there was a big evolution between uh, uh, UK and then in, in, in Italy. Um, and that's where probably the number of attendees require a much more structured, a much more planned uh, organization. Um, this year, we we paired basically the last year number of attendees, which is probably very good still. It's probably due to uh, DjangoCon uh, being in the U.S. In, the, in, in this week as well, so lots of Django developers probably went over to the U.S. Yeah. instead of coming here as they usually do. Yeah, and SciPy was last week as well, so oh, right. uh, a lot of people from the data, the, the data science community was, were there. Um, so the work groups, we already talked about them last year, but it's good, it's really good to uh, to repeat and also because they are, they are working uh, Quite better. Um, we have the, the work groups uh, have one chairperson, uh, sometimes two, um, and the, the working groups member. It's it's mostly uh, driven by uh, act, who's more active, who's more um, who's more helping more. Uh, in some cases, it's not the case, and we tr we, we try to talk and and you know making na natural roles when when it. Uh, when it, it's necessary, um, but it's always necessary to have a contact point to talk between uh, work groups. Uh, and uh, work groups have voting and no voting members, so usually decisions that are not uh, can be taken quickly and are not so important. They technical, uh, uh, small technical things that, that just are just taken. Uh, other are we have a vote. Uh, we have. Uh, quite a few teams, their conference administration, uh, finance, uh, sponsors, communications, support, financial aid, marketing and design, um, the program work group, web, media team, the code of conduct, uh, and the on-site team, which is more or less a glue between those. Um, and of course, it's, it's the, the, the team that needs to be in contact with the venue doing the work locally and taking care of the details. Go ahead. Okay, so Fabio, le <clears throat> Fabio left the last slide for me. 
Uh, so, so we also have something called the guidelines, which was uh, it's actually something that is, it was an idea that was part of this move to the work group. So we wanted to start to document how we actually run the uh, the conference. Um, we started working on this document. We've not really uh, done much work on it recently. We should probably after this conference to have something like um, uh, like like a, a document that that lets new people that come into the organization uh, better start off in the organization, so they have a better idea of what they're signing up for and how everything works. So right now, basically, we have the wiki uh, that we use internally where we document stuff. And we have uh, lots of uh, chat logs, of course, now in, in Telegram. We have the mailing list and we have the mailing list archives. So uh, the organization is basically centered around the mailing lists for more things that don't need to be done right away. And then for, for things that are more urgent, we use the, the uh, Telegram groups, which has uh, worked out really well. So that was the last slide. Uh, let me just show you how our Telegram groups thing looks like. Let me just move this over here. Just uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just gonna apply this filter here, so uh, you can just see the Europeans and stuff. I don't know whether I can make it any larger than this. So you can see here, those are the, um, uh, the this is the volunteers group, for example. Um, this is how the the, the well, basically, the, the, the people volunteering here at the conference do <laughs> how they um, communicate with, with each other, which is really convenient because you can just write here. You don't have to phone anyone or anything. Uh, we, we do have these walkie-talkies outside there, but I don't think they used this uh, this year because we're basically doing everything here. Um, then you have the, the public one. No idea what this is. Uh, this is the public one. This is one that uh, where anyone one can sign up. This is something that, that we have to monitor a bit because uh, sometimes we have messages there that don't belong there, and so you need to do a bit of moderation. Um, this is our board list. There's nothing special here. I mean, we just had a board meeting, for example, so we voted in a few more people. Um, this is the support one. Anyway, this is just the search filter is no longer there. Let me see, you have a few more. We have a, a central one for all the organizers, which is the plaza one. We're using that to just directly uh, send messages to everyone in the organization. Yeah, and that's, has, that's how it works. So using Telegram is great fun as well. You can send stickers, <laughs> <laughs> photos, and um, yeah, this has been really good. Right, so now is question and answer time. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Yes. Right, right. Yes, the, the, the way that it works is that you basically write an email to the board. We then contact the chairs of that particular work group that you want to work in, ask them whether they have a need for more people, which we usually always do. Uh, <laughs> and then we just we sign you up for it. Um, there, there's one thing that we found in, 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 in the last year is that people, we, we had quite a few people who signed up for these work groups, but they didn't actually do any or not much work, let's put it that way. And because the sign-up process is, is uh, rather, well, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, so it would be better to really consider if you want to do, actually do work in that work group to only then apply for the work group. And then, of course, we'd happily, ha happily sign you up for everything. Right, we have a we have a wiki for this. Um, 
Yeah. How can I? Well, we just like explain it. Sure. From, uh, yeah. Hello. Don't have. We're happy for suggestions how we can manage better because we have many people just like being there and sometimes doing something. Um, and the problem is we some tasks have deadlines and people tend to tell after the deadline I didn't make it because, and this is horrible for us, because for us, we'll be, uh, the chairs, we have to step in on short notice. Um, and we're trying to find better solutions, also like a way of well, open communication. If there's a deadline and you don't make it, tell us as soon as you know, it's no problem. I mean, it's all volunteering um, and we're trying to build a, a great conference. So actually we are, I think, should, like that's what we discussed, we should try a little bit more doing better management as well. It's not just like a one side story because it's, some, it's not, not everybody's made just to, to, to grab responsibility and basically working work groups was a lot like this, just, okay, somebody does, I just do it. And, See what happens, <laughs> and, yeah. but it worked out well. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. So one thing I, I wanted to mention, like on top of this, there's also some learning curve to be active on the working groups, um, mostly because it's not just like a sponsors work group. You just don't drop in and send emails randomly, and that's that. Um, so yeah, we, we, this year the work groups were new. We had a quite heavy lifting, uh, raising all the documentation and raising wiki pages and raising stuff uh, and also checking that sometimes wiki pages are too long or not work, do not work really well. Um, so we're trying to make it easier for everyone to, to, to join. Uh, it's also good to have someone joining and documenting the process saying what are the things that I missed and why I had to drop the ball because you know time is it's in the same in both directions like you know, both from us and new volunteers so we are trying to do a lot of work to make easier to everyone to enjoy so this is uh, the wiki that we're using so this is the main page of the wiki we have entries for different conferences down here we have the milestones those are the actual milestones that we used and sometimes you can see how we, uh, what we planned and what the, original, the final then milestone uh, turned out to be. Um, then we have, uh, for each work group, we have a page down here. So for example, if you go to the, the sponsors one, you then get um, the various resources that we use for that group like a mailing list, uh, various addresses that we use for this. Um, then we have working documents. Those are usually on, on uh, Google Drive somewhere, so we're using Google Docs a lot and spreadsheets. Um, and we also try to uh, put extra information here that's being asked by, by people, by sponsors in this case, um, and try to document processes of how we do certain things. For example, with the sponsors, you, the, there's a sign-up process for the sponsors that uh, we have to follow each and every time. And so we try to document all this here. And then later on, the idea was to take this information and put it into those guideline documents that we wanted to create. So right now, we have everything up in here. And then you have the members here, voting members and non-voting members. You also see inactive members. So every now and then, we go around and check in the work groups which members are actually active or not. And then the ones that are not active, they get converted into this inactive status, um, which is a way for us to basically know whether we need to add more people to that work group or not. Because sometimes we have a huge roster for a full work group, but in, in effect, only very few people are actually working uh, in that work group. Yeah, that's... That's how that works. That's one of the starting points. Exactly. When, like right. Right. When when you when you start in a work group, what we do is we sign you up to all the mailing lists that you need to be signed up for, uh, give you the the uh, links to the Telegram groups, uh, and then we write an introduction in, 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 in a welcome message for you, uh, and, and then we usually expect the chairs of that work group to then take you and then show you the various things that need to be done. 
And like what, what Alex just said, we also need to, we need to change the method that we're currently using a bit. Because right now the method has been that we kind of expect people to find work themselves. So they, they look at something, see that this needs work, so I'm just going to sit down and do something. That model works for some people, but it doesn't work for everyone. So uh, we probably need to apply some more management in this area. I mean, also want to point out, it's, we have improved a lot moving away from emails. And also, it's really rewarding. I mean, most of the time, uh, I mean, for we work group, I've been in work, program work group and communications, you really work with friendly, constructive, respectful people. It's, it's once you have all the tools and you know what to do, it's, 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 it's also fun. It's not just like, um, not that we're only complaining about all the problems, yeah? <laughs> it's also a lot of fun and especially, this is very fun seeing everybody having a good time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, for, for example, for the sponsors work group, uh, since uh, each company has a set of the same tasks, everyone, um, they are repeated tasks. Um, I used uh, Asana, I don't know if you're familiar with it, so it's a task control web-based uh, system, and it worked quite well for the sponsors work group, I think. And there we, so some of the people in the sponsors work group were there and they, we could assign tasks to different people and remind of what tasks were uh, still to be done. And yeah, yeah I think, sorry, no, 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 just one sentence. I think it's always really important to do the work somebody else can pick up if you're on holiday or, and stuff. Yeah, so it's it's not about making oneself like uh, the, the organization depending on one person's information. Yeah. But, yeah. There was a question. question there. Are there specific areas uh, that we have already identified in which you need uh, help with respect to this year, for example? Well, for, for next year, first we have to see uh, how many of the existing work group members actually want to continue working in that work group. And then, of course, I mean, in general, we need, we need help everywhere. Uh, because if you look at, at this year's conference, we've been maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 members who were really active, I mean, really put in a lot of work. And um, and this is a huge conference, so it's not really enough. And the last weeks before the conference are always really, really stressful because there's so many things to, to think about. And it would be a lot better to put that on more shoulders. Yeah, uh, maybe one thing uh, is, as we come to closer to the conference, there are a lot more free, um, help tickets Probably some of these things could be handled by volunteers or people that are not really work groups or just backups uh, if they have uh, access to central information. Uh, so that may be an area that we didn't work so much this year. Yeah, but also uh, building this knowledge base yes, yes, and yes. Yeah. yeah, mostly communication is. Yeah. question was why, why we do need to change location every two years. Um, but it, mostly because it's a tradition and it's good to have it uh, running around Europe. Uh, you know, when you centralize in one place, then after three years, the team tends to be the same, and or four years or five years, then you have uh, the same problems we had, like rebuilding everything uh, two years ago. Years ago. Is it known where it will be already? Next? No. No, no. We, we, uh, we are currently running this, this CFI, what we call CFI, so a call for interest. So we're trying to figure out who is interested in maybe submitting a proposal. And uh, that is running until next Friday. And then we're going to enter, we want to look at what the applications we get, and then we're going to uh, work with those people to then work on the CFP. If we just get one uh, proposal, of course, it, it'll make things easier. Um, we can just then basically skip the CFP and go directly into uh, then figuring out how exactly we want to to run the conference in that uh, new location. So 
and we will be announcing the proposal, the CFI proposals that we received uh, tomorrow. So I in the closing session, we'll be saying the ones we, we received. Right. So, I mean, basically, you have to look at it. Also, have to look at it this way: doing a conference like this is, is a lot of work, and people do get burned out. And uh, that's also one of the reasons why we changed to new locations. Previously, we, we basically did it because we wanted it, this to be Europe Python, so it should be a European conference that moves around in Europe. And that's, of course, also one of the reasons why we, we change locations every now and then. Um, I don't know, just complementing what you have been said on the volunteer side of the uh, view, point of view. Like, uh, it's not, uh, if you're considering volunteering, like it's really not uh, that important where it's gonna be next year, but you can help from anywhere. Like, I live in Brazil, uh, I helped from there, uh, I did what I could, it was great. Like, I would, we, there were lots of things to do, we had fun, but I tinker a little bit in your codes and learn a little bit too. And, well, it, it's an opportunity. Uh, you have to give some 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 of your free time that you you normally would would be just watching TV and stuff or anything. Or, but it's fun. You meet new new people, and it was really good for me. Like it was a great opportunity. Yes. Just complimenting. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, eight. 80% of the work can be done online. Yeah, that's the if conclusion. You're a, if you're in a crazy time zone, it, it can actually be good to, people do, do not need to stay awake for, for midnights or stuff like that. Could be switching different time zones. Less than 20 organizers at all with volunteers, but it was in, in uh, Br Python Brazil. It's a conference. We ha we got like less than 300 people in there. Like it was 250, and Euro Python is 1,000. So. <laughs> More questions. So, do we have strict times to switch the session, or? Yeah, I mean, we have questions. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, any question or anything that you forget to ask, or maybe you end up with other questions later, just drop, stop by the, the registration desk, or take us around, and we will be happy to, to ask, to reply to all the questions. Uh, can we have a sprint this weekend uh, for our Python, for the architecture of the website and the rest? And this weekend we have sprint. Yeah. yeah. I think so, yeah. Eventually, we, we <laughs> should probably organize a sprint for volunteers. We, we can set, up the, set this up. Yeah, the organizers will be there anyway, so... People check the, the information on that we need, or if there are stuff that we can do on the website. Are we talking about the web or the volunteers? I think both. For the website, for the application, for the synchronization between the, the web, the mobile application, and the website. Yeah. Uh, for the management of the volunteers. Yeah. We what, what When the other session starts.
do have some. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we are already in the general assembly. <laughs> time zone. For the for the general assembly, because uh, this is a very formal kind of thing that we have to do. Uh, we'd like to ask all the EPS members to sit in the front row so that we know where to stop counting for the votes. Yeah, it's it's everybody's welcome. It's just a. Uh, and then easier. everyone else can just sit in the in, in the in the back rows. So 